Hello everyone and welcome to a very special Friday new product post here at Sparkfun Electronics. I know over the years I've said that this is a special post many different times, but this time it's actually really true. This will be my final new product post here at Sparkfun Electronics. As of October 1st, I will no longer be with the company. So the first thing I want to do is talk about the new products that we have for this week. And for the rest of the video, I've picked out of assortment of various other products that I just happen to really like in the catalog. And so I'm going to talk about those as well. So first up, we have the capacitor kit. Let's say you're building a project and you need a capacitor. You could very easily go to DigiKey, Mauser, or any of the other places and you know order one or two that you need, but you're gonna pay shipping, it's gonna be a whole thing. So we put together this really simple capacitor kit which has a lot of standard values in it and a lot of those values. So you can have pretty much what you need on hand. We've got everything from some electrolytics and all sorts of different values. We've got some ceramics. And on the front, we even have this handy little guide that shows you the values and how to read the different values. So if you're needing some capacitors, the capacitor kit is a great way to have a good assortment of what you need on hand. Next up this week, we have a new Edison block. Uh, blocks for Edison are a lot like shields. They just kind of um, stack on and give you more hardware functionality for your Intel Edison module. This particular one is a revision or kind of a revamping of the battery block. We're still gonna sell the standard battery block, but this one comes without the battery attached. With the battery attached, it kind of makes the stack a little bit too tall and it's difficult to keep stacking. With the removal of the battery on this one, it allows you to use an external battery that can be a higher capacity or a lower capacity and also makes stacking the whole stack a lot easier. Seeing as this is my last Friday new product post, I wanted to talk about a few more products. So I went downstairs and I found six products that I really like and either don't get enough attention or maybe people just don't know they're in the catalog. So I just kind of wanted to you know, shine a light on them and show that I think they're pretty cool. The first up are these guys. These are the Hakko CHP170s. They are your basic flush cutters. Um, some of you may or may not know, I am a bit of a tool snob. I do like me some good tools and these are fantastic. I really, really enjoy these. If you're looking for a pair of flush cutter pliers just for trimming off leads, cutting wires, things like that, these are fantastic. For the price, they are amazing. Um, I really like the cushion grip. I really like the springs. Um, I highly recommend the Hakko CHP170s. Next up, the Power Cell. The Power Cell is a really cool kind of like Swiss Army knife board. So you have this project, it needs to be powered. You don't want to be tethered to a cable. You're going to want to use it with a battery. We have a really good selection of all these various LiPo batteries. The thing is, a LiPo battery is 3.7 volts and it's like uh, 4, 4.2 volts charged. Your project is usually going to want 5 volts or 3.3 volts, so you need to do something with that. In addition, you also need to charge this battery. That's where this comes in. It is a really simple, really small board, has a micro USB on one side, JST jack on the other. So you plug in your battery like that. And when you plug it into USB, it charges over USB, the battery. And it also gives you output for five volts or 3.3 volts, which is selectable with a little jumper. The other cool thing about this board is it has two little pins off to the side of it, the enable pin that if you ground the enable pin, it will turn the whole thing off. And if you lift it, it will turn the thing on. So this is a really great example of kind of the whole power system that you can have for your project. So adding this one LiPo battery, you have everything that you need to power the project, select between five volts, select between 3.3, and then using the enable pin, you can actually have a nice power switch that turns the whole thing on and off. I always keep a few of these handy on my workbench because inevitably every project I wanna do, I wanna have battery powered, and these are really great for doing that. And also they're great for just a simple battery charger for a LiPo. Next up is this little guy. This is the Open Log. This is probably my favorite product that SparkFun produces. The Open Log is a very simple data logger. On the back, we have a um, socket for a micro SD, and on the top, we have essentially a full Arduino, and then we have a header on the side that matches the footprint of the FTDI. So what this does is it's just a simple logger for any data coming across the serial line. Uh, when I went to Chernobyl and built the Liger, one of these was inside that logged all the data coming off of the GPS and also of the um, Geiger counter as well. They're really simple, they're really tiny. It's practically not that much bigger than just a micro SD card. 
and it hooks up just like an FTDI. So if you're using an FTDI to plug into something and view the serial stream coming off of it, you can pretty much just unplug the FTDI and plug this in place of it. The other interesting thing about this is it has a pretty robust little menu system that you can set up for different baud rates and different options, you know, like starting a new file, appending to the files and things like that. And if you're using another microcontroller to talk to this, you can even have it set those things up. So you can kind of set new files and things like that. And then all you need to do is pop out the card, pop it into your computer, and you have your data stream. So it is a very handy little board. And if you're looking to do any kind of data logging, check out the open log. Moving right along, the next thing I want to talk about is the sound detector. The sound detector is an extremely useful board. Not everyone's gonna have a need for it, but if you have a need for it, you're gonna love it. It has a really simple microphone on it and it has some headers over here for the output. The interesting thing about this board is it has three outputs. The first is just kind of the output that comes off the microphone. It has another one that is kind of the um, threshold essentially. So as the sound level reaches a certain threshold, it will trigger a pin. So if you know, like clapping or other things like that, if you want a threshold to be met and then an action performed on that, you can use that output. The other thing that it has is a very simple, just um, kind of volumetric output, if you will. So, you know, if your volume is this much, it will just output an analog voltage uh, representative of that range. So what you can do with this board is you can have it do like a clapper turn on so that when the sound reaches a certain volume, it triggers an event, or you can have it output a um, voltage to trigger some other event representative of the volume that comes out of it. So it's really interesting that it has kind of those two different modes as well as the normal analog output. The other thing I like about the board is it does have a couple of headers here on the back for adjusting the gain. So you can really use this board to be exactly what you want for your sound application if your application is to trigger some event based on sound. Speaking of sound, we have this little guy. This is the mono amp breakout. Audio projects are really fun, but they kind of get frustrating when you get to that point where you have your audio and you need to spit it out to something. You know, in the early days of doing these videos, we always used to just kind of grab a pair of computer speakers or something like that and jack them in, and then you had to plug it in somewhere and it was just kind of annoying. The um, amplifier board here is a really simple way to add just, you know, a one watt amplifier to your project. Most of the time, one watt is perfectly adequate. You just get a little cone speaker, hook it up to this, hook it back into your project, and you have enough power to create you know, an audible noise from the MP3 trigger or whatever else. And it's a tiny little board, it's really easy to use, has gain settings, and it just really comes in handy for any time you want to play something and you don't want to use headphones and you don't want to hack open a pair of computer speakers. But lastly, for Rob's picks, I have the Hakko FX888D. I really love this soldering station. It is fantastic. Um, if you look at the reviews, pretty much everyone that's used one absolutely loves it. And there's a lot of really good reasons. It's extremely well made. Um, I absolutely love the wand. I love the flexibility in the cable. And the little brass sponge here is just fantastic. And it, you can just feel that it's well built. Um, if you've never used a Hakko before and if you're looking to get a soldering iron, Try one of these out, you will absolutely love it. If you've been using you know, more inexpensive or kind of entry level irons your whole life, this just might be the revelation you need. It is a really, really solid iron. And um, before I came here, I actually had a Hakko that was 15 years old. I bought used off Craigslist and it is still going perfectly strong with the original tip today. These things last forever, so definitely worth the investment. So these are my picks for my final new product post here at Sparkfun Electronics. It has been a great pleasure to have done the videos over the years here. I've done over 200 of these videos and I've met many of you in person at AVC or Maker Faire and um, it has been just a fantastic opportunity I've had. Uh, don't be surprised if you see me more in um, some of the upcoming videos. I might make some cameos coming up, but if you'd like to see more of me, um, go ahead and check out my own YouTube channel, which is linked below in the description. Rob, we're gonna need your badge and your gun. Thanks for your service.